This is a single slot PCIe hardware card capable of encoding an H.264. How are you doing guys? Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, Matrix Compress HD encoder card which we uh, have installed in the Mac Pro 8 core. And you can use this um, for many different software programs. Uh, in this case we're using it for Final Cut Pro 10 and Compressor 4. Uh, you can also use it for uh, most major video editing so uh, software programs such as Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Adobe um, After Effects, uh, Apple's Motion, uh, there's several other ones. And um, once you uh, in install the uh, drivers, you'll get a screen like this. Uh, this is in the preferences, just showing you it's installed. And also in some of the software programs that you have, it'll actually add in presets. And this is in Compressor 4 right here. We've got Matrix Max uh, H.264 settings. And it gives you uh, three different versions, uh, subgroups, um, Blu-ray for Blu-ray discs, uh, Fast Encode, and High Quality. Now the Fast Encode uh, uses the CPU and the encoding card, and the quality is really not that great, so... I suggest using the high quality settings, which breaks it down even further. Apple devices, Flash, other workflows, and YouTube. Um, I'm gonna look down here because I already have a preset made. And we're actually gonna open it up in options just to show you uh, the settings you have for the uh, the Max Compress HD card. And then you can set it uh, to your liking depending on what you're looking for. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drag that up to the uh, job that I'm uh, actually doing for a client right now. Oh, actually, oops, we already got it up here. Um, uh, I'm setting this to 480p. And uh, we're going to change our source. Uh, Make sure it's going in the right place. And I do have to change the file name, so uh, bear with me here. Because I am doing this for a client, so. Okay, there we go. We got that set. And we're going to go ahead and submit that job to a compressor. Uh, we see it's actually working. Now, you can actually tell if it's working by looking at the CPU load. And uh, you'll see it spike up to maybe 40% uh, depending on what computer you're using and uh, it jumped up to about 30 percent here now it actually once the job submitted you'll actually still go way down anyway anywhere from four to four to nine percent depending on how many cores you have and as you can see um, we have the initial spike um, CPU load actually went all the way down to seven uh, I've even seen it actually go down to four percent um, so that's telling you it's going through the encoder card instead of using software rendering uh, through the uh, CPU cores. Which is great because it allows you to use other things for the computer like um, uh, editing more video or uh, doing other things, whatever. Uh, so that's great. And of course it gives you real-time rendering. Uh, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, uh, which is a lot faster. It's uh, anywhere from four to five times as fast as software encoding. And, uh, okay, this uh, job's almost finished. I'm trying to uh, record uh, the time it lapsed, um, which appears not to be working anymore again. There we go. And uh, we're showing about three a little bit past three minutes. And uh, there we go. Um, encoding just finished in about three minutes and 19 seconds uh, to encode. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get uh, rid of the uh, share monitor. Okay, we're actually going to pull up the file. Um, and uh, take a look at it. Uh, 
uh, which is right here, is you want to see. Um, now this file is actually, uh, it's about 4 minutes and 35 seconds. The render time on that was actually 3 minutes and 19 seconds. So that's actually faster than real time encoding. Uh, if you did this by software render, that would have taken uh, as long as uh, 8 to 10 minutes or longer. So as you can see, it's much, much faster.